Hello, good evening. Welcome to News at 10 on TV3 and 3FM 92.7. I'm Stephen Enti and we're live from our studios here at Adesawe Kanda in Accra. You can also watch us live on your DSTV channel 279 and on our social media pages TV3 Ghana. And uh, tonight, should the attempt by a 35-year-old constituent of Kwesimintin to take his life at uh, the legislature serve as the turning point on the conversation of the decriminalization of suicide and the call for a critical look at mental health amongst the youth of Ghana. We have details when we return after the news highlights. On tonight, the Ghana Standards Authority has revealed 10 out of 65 fuel stations visited in the capital were found to be cheating their customers. Nearly a week after the Ghana Standards Authority published a list of fuel stations caught in adjusting pumps to cheat customers, some affected stations are yet to correct the anomaly. The GSA said two companies had broken the GSA seal without permission. Also tonight, a lecturer at the University of Education, Winneba, Dr. Frimpong K. Chirinduku, has filed a suit seeking an injunction on the university's upcoming election for pro-vice-chancellor. The move, according to Dr. Duku, is to demand due process from the school in the organization of the election. Dr. Frimpong K. Chirinduku, who was once suspended by the school and later reinstated, is among others praying the court to compel the university to call for nomination, allowing interest parties to contest. The West Africa Examinations Council, WAEC, has denied any leakage in this year's basic education certificate examinations. Director of Public Affairs, Agnes Te Kujo, who was reacting to information circulating on social media and people, uh, said people should rather be on alert and prevent scammers from selling fake question papers. In Parliament, the first Deputy Speaker, Joseph Osewusu, has questioned the integrity of members of the House who are marked as having attended Parliament even when they fail to do so without permission. He said he has had reason to strike out the names of about 15 of such MPs. All right, those who are major news highlights, remember we're streaming live on Facebook and on 3news.com. You can also hear us on 3FM 92.7. Up next is the big one. Welcome back. Now, a 35-year-old man has been arrested after attempting to commit suicide in Parliament. The man identified as Kojo Mensah was restrained by security personnel after trying to jump from the public gallery. The man from Kwesimintim in the Western region had sat through parliamentary proceedings on Thursday. But just when the speaker adjourned for the day, he got up from his seat and attempted to jump from the public gallery into the main chamber. Officers from Parliament's protection unit in the chamber quickly moved in to foil his intended action. He was transferred to the ministry's police station.
commander of the Parliament Protection Unit, Superintendent Freeman Teti said, a criminal investigation has begun into his conduct. We have a very solid security arrangement, so I don't think it will change anything at all. These are the challenges as police officers we face. The reason why we are here is to handle security within an immediate out of parliament. So that is our responsibility, and we are doing it very well. It's a criminal case that is being taken care of by the police. So details can only be given by the Ministry of Police. And we are referring the case to Ministry of Police Station to conduct investigation. Vice Chairman of the Parliamentary Select Committee on Defense and the Interior, Colin Sowuzwa Mankwais of The View, the incident was an attempt to bring the image of the legislature into disrepute. It's not done anywhere. And we are not supposed to come here with party colors. And the fact that the young man was wearing, I mean, party colors, it tells you that it was well orchestrated just to embarrass parliament and for that matter, the state. It is unclear why he attempted suicide. And Parliament has assured the general public of security in its precinct a couple of uh, hours after the 35-year-old man attempted taking his life in the Chamber's gallery. In a statement uh, released by the Acting Director of Public Affairs, Kate Ardo, she said uh, Parliament had taken great care to ensure its uh, precinct is properly secured to avert any incident. The statement said the man at the center of the alleged suicide attempt, Kojo Mensa, had gone through security security checks uh, having demanded the audience of MP for Kwesimintim. It said there was no cause for suspicion since the 35-year-old man was without a weapon or a harmful material and was appropriately dressed in accordance with the rules of attendance upon uh, the house. He was said to have conducted himself fairly until he took a bandage out and tried to strangle himself. Meanwhile, Parliament is assuring citizens of being welcome to watch proceedings in the House while doing so uh, comply with the governing rules of attendance. Right, uh, let's quickly get onto the telephone lines and speak with uh, Dr. Joseph Osafo, who we're told is a suicidologist. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Doc, for joining us. So why should someone choose such a public place to commit suicide? Is that the uh, secret wishes or something? Hello, sir. Hello, Doc. Right, uh, Dr. Safo is still on the line. We're trying to get a clear communication. Uh, yeah. So uh, if you can hear me, I was asking why someone would choose such a public place to commit suicide. And I was asking whether uh, he uh, secretly wished, uh, was wishing to be saved by staging this suicide in public. Well, um, it depends on how you would want to read this kind of suicide. Of course... Um, we know, we've seen a couple of these, not only in Ghana. People may choose to either politically or religiously protest and use suicide, which has often been called mm. self-immolation. Um, if you want to look at what happened today and read it from that angle, then what a gentleman did is actually a protestation wanting to use suicide. We don't know yet, but that is something... Uh, which happens that people will engage in study media for pure protest, uh, religious or political. The other is, um, of course, when he is assessed by mental health workers, who gets to know whether he is getting delusional or this is a pure uh, right. protestation. Right, Doc, I know also that your work uh, brings you closely to uh, the possible reasons why people take these actions. You have enumerated a few, but I'm saying that I know your work brings you closer to uh, people of this kind, people who become suicidal and possibly also 
come close to the reasons they will take such actions. I'm, 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 I'm concerned that this is becoming an increasing trend of suicide. And I, I'm, I'm asking whether there is any particular reason for the rise. Well, there are several reasons for the rise of suicide in Ghana, and I think this has been carefully um, documented, uh, ranging from, um, I mean, people who are going through romantic, romantic crisis, young people who are breaking, to some um, um, numbers of those who are depressed, uh, or others with some common mental health, like depression, uh, anxiety, and stress. To men who may want to die because they have lost their faith or they are ashamed, to women who may have marital crisis. The reasons are enormous. In fact, others have given us that because they are angry at God. So, I mean, some have attempted because they are bored, they don't have a job, some have lost jobs. So the reasons are numerous, uh, mm. not a single reason. One of the things that we have to quickly bear in mind is that suicide is a multifaceted condition. So, so many factors uh, could predispose someone to engage in such behaviors. And in Ghana, we have equally recorded a number of those, some of which I've just enumerated. Mm, I, 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 I sympathize, really, uh, when people undergo such, uh, I will call that, trauma to the extent that they will think that uh, their lives are not worth living. I mean, I, I'm very keen on this kind of discussion because it affects everyone. There are no more people who suddenly get suicidal thoughts and within a couple of an eye, a uh, blink of an eye, they, they end it all. But there is also that broader discussion of uh, criminalizing uh, the attempted suicide and uh, Kojo Mensah's issue has brought back to the fore the discussion to decriminalize the act of suicide. Is this something you 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 support uh, the decriminalization of suicide and what will be your reasons? Now that this will be I will be surprised if anybody sees what happens today from a criminal perspective, of course, where it did happen is anybody, um, if anybody says whatever the gentleman did is a breach of security, that I can agree. And the police may say, all right, let's first back on um, a bit about him and what his intention was all about. Now, if we establish that this young man really was going to engage in suicide for protestation, like self-immolation, or this gentleman is not well, then of course, I don't think deciding to apply the law that anybody who attempts suicide and is discovered will be mm. uh, dealt by the law. I, I, I don't think that should be the way to go. That should be the I way to go. I think that the law allows for diversion, that people who have problems of such nature should be sent to mental health uh, professionals for thorough assessment. And that's what I'm expecting the police to do. Once they're taking him off and prevented him from killing himself, the next is for mental health experts and professionals who are first and know what is happening. All right, talking about mental... Talking about mental health experts and professionals, I know that our mental health institutions are usually uh, like institutionalized, where people are kept at, at a mental home institution, creating a certain level of stigma. That, as far as I know, there are no mental health support systems in all our endeavors. In other places, there are mental health units at workplaces where people can just walk in when they feel depressed or. Uh, uh, morally, uh, d d you know, down about particular events or happenings in their lives in relation to the work environment. There are other institutions where even in the church, there are mental health support systems. But we don't have these kinds of support systems way from our uh, family family units through to our educational units and, and schools, hospitals, etc. What would you suggest to be the way forward in order to make uh, mental health more appreciated in the context uh, that I'm talking about? Well, 
Um, I, I, on one hand, I would disagree. On the other, I'll agree. Let me explain that quickly. Mm. Uh, this is a, a context, I mean, resource constrained system, we know. Um, this manpower crisis in terms of numbers of mental health workers that we have. But we have other resources that perhaps we have not really taken a good look at. Um, Ghana has been rated by a Gallup report, I think in 2013 or 2012, as one of the most religious country, uh, countries, country uh, country in the world. And one of the resources we have, which informally provides some kind of respite for people who are going through any kind of mental crisis or challenges or stress, is found in the church, of course. Religion is being found and documented to provide or contribute robustly, double-edged or playing a double-edged role in, in, in mental health. On one hand, it may be a robust processor of guilt, condemnation, stigma, and all that. Mm. But on the other hand, which is positive, is often being seen and documented strongly to be associated with low levels of social behavior, um, high levels of self-esteem, and a host of mental health, right. you know, um, issues. I mean, mental, mental, yeah, mental health um, um, issues. In other words, it fosters and builds people's mentally and strengthens them. And so, our churches are places of comfort and safe haven, and we know that has been documented. I understand that governments over the years have not really had very good funds and resources to support mental health. But one of the things that we still are calling on government to look into is to increase funding into these areas. I mean, into mental health and increase funding into research and supporting uh, these institutional homes. We know that we have a policy in trying to, you know, de-institutionalize our mental health right. units and right. make sure that uh, those who are in any mental, uh, who have mental health, uh, mental illness uh, problems, could be supported by their families. Right. But on the other hand, one ought to be careful to look at the burden such move will have for families. Mm. We have had studies which have examined, for example, the pressures that families and caregivers have had to go through because government over the years have not been able to pro provide sort of support and services for people who have one form or the other of a mental illness. Right. And so the entire burden is lying on the shoulders of families. So, uh, I mean, it goes to the families and our communities. Families are doing their best. Mm. The burden is huge. It's, it's enormous. They are doing their best to provide some support for their own work. Right, uh, Dr. And, um, and, and others. So I think that, yes, there are problems. But we are doing our best. I think that generally African governments will have to scale up and increase funding into mental health. Right. Uh, Doc, uh, we're grateful for your time. Uh, Dr. Uh, Joseph Osafo is a suicidologist. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, let's now go back and see some of the comments. We asked the question, should the attempt by the 35-year-old constituents of Kwesimin team to take his life at the legislature serve as a turning point on the issue of decriminalization of suicide and the call for a critical look at the mental health among uh, the youth in Ghana? And uh, here are some of your uh, responses that have been coming in. This one from Hussein. Hussein says, I don't think he deserves to be convicted. He has a problem. They should probe him further for him to say what is bothering him. Maybe he's disappointed in his MP. Uh, very good uh, thought there, Hussein. And Kwejo, awesome. You say that that guy was just an attention seeker, seeking riches, poor attempt of suicide. Uh, those were your views also. And uh, this one coming from Adai Michael. Adai Michael says, 
Yes. Okay, yes. You agree with the fact that uh, we need to start a new discussion on decriminalizing the attempt on suicide. And Sika Warman says, yes, I think it's about time our legislators reviewed that section of the criminal uh, criminal act. You said a section of the constitution, but that's a criminal criminal code. Mental illness is a neglected topic in this country, and it is very bad. I agree perfectly with you, Sika, and thanks very much for your view. And Yabo Andy Jan says that what he did has nothing to do with his mental health. <laughs> oh, well, uh, he is advocating for his share of the constituency cake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's using rough tactics uh, by your definition to get his share of the booty in Parliament, right? But he was in the public gallery and he was threatening to jump off. Imagine that I am in the public gallery and suddenly decided that there's some cuckoo in my head and I decided to jump off. No, that's not good. It's not a good way to seek the attention of your MPs. And Odole Tabitha Chawe says that a neglected topic, that's true, not deliberately, but ignorantly, I like that, guess we never thought it could be an imperative uh, concern. Uh, this is a very interesting uh, contribution there, Ms. Chawe. And Jason Albert Kwafu, you say that, but I'm beginning to think that uh, um, he finds his legislature so disappointing, legislative rep so disappointing, and so he made, uh, it made him to want to take his life. I tell you, so many of us were very interested in the just recent MPs' performance survey. Uh, some of them are really failures, and now it's kind of having effect on us. Oh, don't go suicidal, Jason. Uh, that was a slap on the face of the MP in question. I agree with you. The MP should have been able to make time for his constituents the numerous times that he called on him and Mary Ajaho says this man I believe might have been going through depression or frustration I agree with that that section of the uh, criminal code uh, must be reviewed and amended uh, so those were your comments uh, coming in. Uh, this is still News at 10, and we're live from the News Hub at Sadisawi Kanda. If you're listening to us on radio, we're live on 3 FM 92.7, Ketsmin 107.1 FM in, in Wa and W93.5 also. Uh, in Ketsmin in Tamale and W93.5 in Wa. We'll be right back with more news. Please stay. Welcome back. Now, traditional rulers have been urged to institute measures to compel parents to educate their children. This call was made as Ghana joined the rest of the world to mark World Day Against Child Labour uh, in Koko Nuya in the Setra East District of the Ashanti region. In Kwankwe Nuya, I beg your pardon, in the Setra East District of the Ashanti region. Children are the future of the world. However, when they are forced into labor, their mental and physical growth is impeded. The child is unable to go to school, depriving his or her right to education. This is just one of the many fundamental rights that get violated when a child is forced to work. The harsh reality, however, is that more than 200 million children are engaged in labor today, at least 218 million children between the ages of 5 and 18 are in employment globally. Statistics from the International Labour Organization, ILO, showed that 152 million of the global working children are victims of hazardous child labour. 72.1 million of these child labourers are found in Africa. Child labor occurs in almost all sectors of every economy, yet seven out of every ten of these children are working in the agricultural sector. It is unfortunate that society seems to have accepted it as a phenomenon, especially in Ghana. Indeed, we all witness child labor every day, as about two million Ghanaian children are still trapped in child labor. The 2019 World Day Against Child Labour, therefore, looked back on progress achieved over 100 years of ILO support to countries on tackling child labour. The day further looked forward towards the Sustainable Development Goal Target 8.7, calling for an end to child labour in all eight forms by 2025. <laughs> Na 
ni ni ye die ana ni school sem wa mfa no serious a enye ni wu e ma sa awufo no this year's celebration was on the theme children shouldn't work in field but on dreams we are committed to supporting the whole process and what we should ask we say our vision for every child is life in all its fullness how do we ensure that we give them life in all its fullness if we are using them in the fields executive director of child rights international bright appear as well as representatives of various non-governmental organizations urged the state to effectively collaborate with the local authorities to fast-track efforts at eliminating child labor. And that's how we wrap up with News at 10. Thanks very much for making time. On behalf of the crew, good night. I'm Stephen Antti.